given f of x, the graph of f of the absolute value of x is the same as the graph of f of x when x is greater than or equal to zero, and for x less than zero, f of the absolute value of x is the graph of f of x to the right of the y-axis reflected across the y-axis. Let's consider f of x, which is given here. Let's first look at a table of values. Notice in the table we have the x values in the first column, f of x in the second column, and f of the absolute value of x in the third column. The first thing to notice is that when x is non-negative, or when x is greater than or equal to zero, the function values f of x and f of the absolute value of x are the same. But that's not true when x is negative. Notice when x is negative three, f of negative three is negative 22, but f of the absolute value of negative three is actually equal to f of positive three, which is equal to positive two, which we found here. And when x is negative two, f of negative two is negative 5.5, but f of the absolute value of negative two is equal to f of positive two, which is equal to 0 0.5, which again we found here. So graphically this means when x is greater than or equal to zero, the two graphs will be the same, but to graph f of the absolute value of x when x is negative, we have to reflect the part of the graph of f of x to the right of the y-axis across the y-axis. Let's look at this graphically. Here we have the graph of f of x. If we want to graph f of the absolute value of x, the first thing we need to do is ignore the part of the graph when x is less than zero, which is the part of the graph to the left of the y-axis, this piece here. Next we know the graphs are the same when x is greater than or equal to zero, which is this piece of the graph of f of x. So this piece of the graph of f of x is the same as the graph of f of the absolute value of x when x is greater than or equal to zero, which would be this piece of the graph of f of the absolute value of x. And now to get the left part of the graph of f of the absolute value of x, we reflect the part of the graph of f of x to the right of the y-axis, this piece, across the y-axis, which gives us the left half of the graph of f of the absolute value of x, which is this piece here. Notice how because it's formed by a reflection across the y-axis, the graph of f of the absolute value of x will always have symmetry across the y-axis. Let's look at one more example. Here we are given the graph of f of x. If we want to graph f of the absolute value of x, the first step is to ignore the part of the graph of f of x when x is less than zero, which is the part of the graph to the left of the y-axis, this part here. When x is greater than or equal to zero, the graph of f of x and the graph of f of the absolute value of x are the same. So here's the part of the graph where x is greater than or equal to zero, which is the part that's to the right of the y-axis or on the y-axis. So this piece of the graph of f of x is the same as this piece of the graph of f of the absolute value of x. And now to graph the left part of f of the absolute value of x, we reflect the part of the graph of f of x to the right of the y-axis, this piece here, across the y-axis. If we reflect this part of the graph across the y-axis, notice how it will give us the left part of the graph of f of the absolute value of x, which is this piece here. I hope you found this helpful.